What's up everyone, Kyra Carl here, and in this video, you are going to learn how to fix your stiff and achy ankle that is causing you pain and problems when you walk, when you run, when you squat, and you're gonna do it by learning my go-to ankle dorsiflexion exercises for strength and stability. And stay tuned towards the end of the video where I'm gonna show you my number one, my go-to mobility exercise that I've personally used every time I've hurt my ankle. Let's do it. For your convenience, I have taken the time to chapterize this video, which means if you've already watched it and you know where you want to jump to, you can go ahead and look in the description below and you can see some links that can jump you straight to the content that you're looking for. Now, if you're anything like me, you have had one or multiple ankle injuries as you've gone through life and played sport. Now, I see ankle injuries a lot when I'm at work, and I often see up to 20% of a loss of ankle dorsiflexion. That's when the toes head towards the knee. Now, that loss of dorsiflexion will lead to pain and problems when you walk, when you run, when you squat, but also it's going to change your movement patterns as you do all of these activities and more. Now, what that actually means is moving forward, you are more likely to re-injure yourself because you've had a previous injury and your body is not moving in the proper biomechanical way, which means we have to get this sorted as quickly as possible. Now, what you need to understand is that whether this is a more chronic long-term problem or an acute recent injury that you want to self-rehabilitate from, we are actually going to have a loss of that dorsiflexion and at the same time with that loss of dorsiflexion we're going to have a shortening and a tightening of the tissues at the back of the ankle and into the achilles so to properly rehabilitate your dodgy ankle what we're going to have to do is actually strengthen and stretch the tissues and the structures around your ankle equally so that actually that dorsiflexion can return with full control so you no longer have pain and problems when it comes to walking and running and squatting. So with these next four movements, we're going to be strengthening and controlling the joints of the ankle to ensure that there are no weak spots and we can actually walk and move and function in an optimal way as we do all activities throughout the day. Now, most important throughout all of these movements is that actually you do it in a controlled manner. We're going to be using a band which creates resistance, but we are not looking to go too heavy or too light. We want the Goldilocks zone to be just right that we can do around 20 reps for two sets. Now, the first exercise that we're going to be doing here is a plantar flexion exercise. So that's the foot coming away from the knee. And we're gonna be doing this by utilizing bands. Now, if you have a TheraBand that you may have got from a physio or online, then you can use that. Alternatively, we can use a power band or even the shorter bands that you might see people use in the gym. What I want you to do first is actually raise that ankle up in the air. There is no point having the ankle touching the floor as you're doing this because you won't have a complete range of motion in the controlled manner that I actually want you to have. So as you can see here, we're placing a rolled up towel underneath the back of the leg, and this is gonna elevate that ankle into the air as we do all of these exercises. So this first exercise is a plantar flexion exercise. We are going to place the band across the uh, base of the foot, and this is going to be below the toes, and it is also not going to be down closer towards the ankle. We don't want it too high or too low because it may flick off or not create enough tension and movement and control as we do the exercise. So place the band across the foot, and we're going to control this plantar flexion as we push the foot down and away from us. And as, it return, as we return back up towards our head, we're doing this in a controlled manner. We don't want this to flick up or be weak. Everything that we do here is controlled. Again, we're going to repeat this for 20 reps and we're going to do two sets. Now, all of this is controlled. If you find 20 reps is too easy, you can actually go up a band level to create more resistance. Next, from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go into dorsiflexion. So again, I've already told you that, that is bringing your toe 
back towards your head. The band can be placed in a similar location. However, this time we actually have to tie the band off to something that is away from us rather than towards us. Now we can do this by wrapping the band around a table or tying it off into a location that is going to work for you. And we're going to again have that foot raised and elevated with the towel. And we're going to do 20 reps of this for two sets. Again, if this is too easy, up that resistance, do it nice and slow and very controlled, and we're gonna get the maximum bang for buck out of this movement. Now we've got two more exercises to look at in this group, which is external rotation and internal rotation. So first with external rotation, we can actually utilize either tying the band off to something to the side of us, or we can actually place it around our opposing foot. Now, as we do this, this is changing the angle of resistance from rather than being towards our head, it is now towards the foot. As we apply pressure, we are going to externally rotate, so to rotate outwards and away from our body. We're gonna do this for 20 reps, we're gonna do it for two sets, and we're going to do it in a very controlled manner. Now, moving to internal rotation, we actually have to get a little bit creative. Now, we can either tie this band off onto the leg of a table or something like that. Alternatively, we can take our leg that we have just used and cross it over our body. As you see, I can now place that band around the base of my foot and alter that line of drive again. So it's actually now creating a resistance onto internal rotation. Once again, we're gonna do this for 20 reps, we're gonna do it for two sets, and we are going to move up in band resistance if this is too easy. Now when it comes to our ankle, we need to ensure that the joints of the ankle are actually moving properly. Now one of the big culprits for loss of dorsiflexion is actually the talus. Now the talus or talus uh, will lose its glide movement. So as the foot comes into dorsiflexion, it should also glide. Now the talus when it loses that glide movement will create a resistance or a restriction in dorsiflexion which is the problem that we want to fix. So in this next exercise we need to increase that talus glide and we're going to be doing it by using a band. But before that, if you haven't already done so, hit that like button, let me know that this content is valuable to you and I'll keep creating it for you. Now with this anchored talus glide exercise. This is my go-to rehabilitation exercise to ensure that my ankle is moving in the proper way. As I've alluded to before, I have had multiple ankle injuries and this is the one that I always come back to. So what we're going to do is we're going to raise the foot onto an elevated platform. We can do this on a block, a table, a chair, whatever is right for you. And we need to anchor our band to something below where we're going to place our foot on this elevated surface. So as you can see here, I am using a kettlebell and the band is gonna be tied off to that. Now I'm going to place my foot into the band and I'm going to lift up and place my foot on top of the table here. This is creating a really nice pull in a downwards direction back towards that kettlebell. Now, you need to be very careful where you place the band in this exercise. If you place it too high, you're actually going to be on the tibia and this is going to create the opposite movement of what we actually want to do. So we need to make sure that the band is as low as it can go, right in the crevice of the ankle joint and it's going to pull that talus bone back and down as we do this exercise. So. Now that we're in position, what we're going to do, we have the resistance, it feels okay. We are going to lean forward and move our knee forwards over the top of our foot. We're gonna do this in a nice controlled way, especially for the first few. This is really important as you might actually have some clicking, crunching or grinding, maybe even some pain. And we want to make sure that we don't move into that pain. However, we move through a good range of motion without creating any further injuries. Again, we're gonna do this exercise for 20 reps and we're going to do this twice. Now, this isn't a strength specific exercise, so we don't need to go up on band tension. However, if you feel like you can't move forward very far, you might want to just give that band a pull on whatever you've anchored it against to make sure that that, that resistance will actually increase for you as you do this exercise. 
Now, when it comes to stiff and achy, problematic ankles, if we don't get them fixed in a timely fashion, then what is gonna happen is an adaptation to our biomechanical movement patterns, which can impact our knees or our hips. Now, the longer this goes on, the more of a problem that we actually have. So I've done a previous video where I look at stiff and achy knees and how to self-adjust them if you have a problem, and you can check that one out right here. Alternatively, if you've got valgus knee or a knock knee problem, you can check that out there. Now, if you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button, tap that bell icon, like the video, do all of those things. I'll see you next time.